Hey friends and neighbors, this is Rispig, and today we're looking at Pasha from the Strahdcast. It's an actual play podcast of a group, aptly named The Goons, playing the D&D Curse of Strahd campaign. If you watch D&D videos on TikTok, then you definitely encounter them, especially the one where the barbarian Kaz faces off with Strahd and says something so cheeky that Strahd had to let her go. This isn't that character. This is the werewolf slash werebear hybrid child Pasha, and he owns my heart. The dungeon master Trevor Fail pushed every single one of my buttons to get me to care about an NPC. This illustration is inspired by the moment the party took a child away from a situation where he was being used for his supernatural strength as a werebear slash wolf monster. He was kept in a cage and treated like an animal. Since that night, he's been given clothes, food, and friendship. I won't say much more because I don't want to spoil the show or the campaign, but you gotta watch their videos and listen to their podcast. I am so invested in each of the player characters, as well as the Dungeon Master's unique interpretation of the module. I'll put a link to their channel in the description. I had been trying to follow other Strahd playthroughs, but Strahdcast is truly special. You do find the doom and gloom one would expect from a gothic horror adventure centering around an ancient evil vampire, but Treble Fail had expanded the story into an emotional and thrilling roller coaster. And the players, Oh my gosh, the players. I've watched campaigns where the players are people that were hired to work on a project together, and it is a slog. The relationships don't feel genuine, it's all just so forced, and then you can uh, pick up on their real personalities not meshing. There's tension in a Critical Role episode 27 kind of way. A game that has a roleplay element requires mutual trust and respect, and the experience is more enriching if you are friends first. These players are full to the brim with light and goodness, and they have imbued their characters with it. Barovia is in good hands. I want to talk about it more, but I really can't spoil the story for a potential audience. Like I said, links are in the description. I'm actually on my second run as a DM for The Curse of Strahd. I first ran it years ago for my spouse and a couple of friends and, uh, well, one of the characters died. Pretty brutally. During the event in which the goons actually encounter Pasha in their campaign. Everyone was so bummed out by what happened because the person this happened to, she is a real-life Disney princess. I'm talking when she sings, birds and squirrels should be folding laundry, and is just so sweet and selfless. So, for her character to just get slammed by a big bad, it had demoralized us so utterly that we straight up called it quits on the campaign. I have restarted it again, pretty recently. The players are my husband and a different group of friends. A commitment has been made to not get so bogged down by the tone. My new group have really sunk their teeth into the setting. I'll talk about it more in a different video, because like I said, I don't want to spoil anything about the campaign. To talk about the actual illustration. It took me a while to figure out how I was going to represent this character. I knew it needed to be sad, and sad's not enough. It had to be dark and moody. This started out with intense reds, but then I was like, oh wait, this is supposed to be right after his debut during combat, so he would be a little roughed up. If I wanted the blood and scrapes to show, his base colors need to be muted. I've always used overly saturated colors in my work, to the point that my professors had been on my case. I even played with the idea of having it completely in monotone, and the only color being the blood. But honestly... I forgot I was going to do that until several stages later. At that point, it was like, well, we're here. 
I tried to push myself on my shadows. I haven't quite mastered midtones and reflected light for digital artwork. I studied all of that in charcoal and graphite, and boy, it is not a casual undertaking to transition those skills. Digital and traditional mediums are two separate skill sets, and it is a lot of work to master both. Anyone that tells you that digital art is easier, they have no idea what they are talking about. Both worlds have their own rules and physics. The fundamentals are the same, because it's all art. The elements and the principles, you know, color, shape, value, perspective, contrast, etc. But let's say I try to recreate this on a canvas. I could never get a one-to-one -one translation, because from the word go, my approach would have to be different. I gotta determine which tools I'll be using to capture the different textures. Speaking of, I have a weakness for texture brushes. The brush I used for the midtones and core shadows, oh, it is so unnecessarily gritty, but I wanted it all to feel gritty. Simple cell shading has its place, but this piece needed to strike a chord. I did want to expand my shadows by adding in reflected light, but in truth, I was painting this at like 3 a.m., so my brain was done. That's a really bad habit of mine. I can't stick to a healthy sleeping schedule on my art days. On those days, I just keep going until I crash. It's like when you park your car but leave the engine running for six hours. This is probably an unclear metaphor, but trust me, it's accurate. Anyway, that is it for me. Thank you so much for sticking around. If you're interested over on my channel, you'll find the series where I have been retelling the Exandria campaign I played in for two years. Also, go check out Strahdcast. Thank you, and have a great day.